Okay, let us start with the fourth lecture for DC to DC converters and AC voltage controller unit four of our power electronics labs. Uh, let us start with the recap of what we discussed in last three lectures was basics of DC to DC converters, buck converters basically, their design equations, types of choppers, which includes buck, boost, buck boost, and multiphase, boost converter realizations, their design equations, control strategies for all DC to DC or DC to DC converters or choppers, which includes frequency modulation and PWM techniques, performance parameters or key quality indicators for chopper circuits. And we started with the quadrant operations, one quadrant, two quadrant, and four quadrant, out of which we covered first quadrant operation of a buck converter. Now, let's go ahead with class B chopper or quadrant two chopper. Uh, if you see this, typically, you can see a source, chopper is connected parallel to the source, and diode seems to be reverse bias. Naturally, there will be question that how the circuit works. When chopper is on, E drives current through inductor and resistor in the opposite direction. Means chopper is on and current is started from this point and this will be the direction. It's quadrant two operation because your current is going from load to source in this direction, right to left. So here current is negative, but voltage is positive because your uh, most positive point in the circuit is this and this is how your chopper is turned on means this is the direction in which chopper is turned on so current flows in this direction but voltage is maximum at this point and negative maximum at this point because this is negative of a battery though current is negative voltage is positive so quadrant two operation now naturally when chopper is off what will happen when chopper is off then see this is t on chopper is conducting this period and your output voltage is averaged out later on but during this period as source is disconnected you won't see output voltage here and it's a decaying because you are releasing energy from the inductor and when diode is conducting when chopper is off see this is chopper off period then i0 is almost near to zero and output current this is increasing from i min to i max when this diode is conducting you get the output voltage means from this point onwards this is how it works so the output voltage is positive all the time but current goes positive and sorry current goes negative so this is typical quadrant two operation with a negative current and a positive voltage and part of, uh, means when chopper is off that diode is conducting and part of energy stored in inductor is returned to the supply this principle is very well used in a regenerative breaking of the locomotives we'll come to it in electric drives or electrical vehicles 
but this is the basic principle used for this class D choppers. Now two quadrant choppers. See, buck chopper was quadrant one chopper. This quadrant two chopper we discussed, and now a chopper which can be buck or boost. This combines class A and class B. Let us see the quadrant one and quadrant two operation with the help of a diagram. See, this is V, a source voltage. In quadrant one operation, chopper one is on and D2 is conducting. And the flow of current will be V, chopper one is on. This is I0 path of load current going in positive direction, source to load, resistor, inductor, battery means V0 is positive, I0 is positive. This is typical quadrant one operation. Okay. But along with chop, uh, CH1, D2 also conducts. Where is D2? This is your D2. D2 conducts means this has to be forward biased. Means there is a condition that either chopper one is on or D2 is on. Both cannot on simultaneously. Means during quadrant one, when chopper one is on, this is path. When chopper one is off, but chopper two is not on, D2 will get and it will release the energy stored in the inductor. Whereas for quadrant two operation, what is required? Chopper two has to on, but how chopper two will be on? Can see that chopper one is there then how chopper two will be on in this case chopper two will be on in this case through this path where this is the maximum potential point chopper two is on and energy is fed back to the load means either chopper two conducts or d1 conducts to fed back the energy to the supply. Since when CH2 is on, this chopper 2 is on, voltage E, this battery voltage, forces this current to flow in the opposite direction through inductor and chopper 2. Means this is the loop of operation. Means if I want to break down this operation, this operation will be CH1, means V, CH1, let us consider interval 1. I0, R, L, and E to battery negative. Interval 1. Interval 2 can be then this is disconnected. Neither CH1 is on, neither CH2 is on. Energy is stored in the inductor and D2 gets forward bias. Energy is dissipated in this loop. D1 cannot be forward bias at the same time because this potential is higher which makes this cathode at a higher potential and D2, sorry, D1 in the reverse bias. So this is typically a free will action, interval 2. In interval 3, let us consider this V is on, but CH1 is on, so this path is open. This is reverse bias, so this path is open, but this E has some energy, and in, uh, sorry, E has some potential and L has stored some energy. So this E will force opposite current, means quadrant two operation, because current is negative. So this current will flow like this, CH2 is on, and these both are shorted points, means negative of this and negative of this. So it will flow to this, or even if it goes to this, the same point. So CH2 on, is third interval. When CH2 is turned off, but CH1 is not turned on, what will happen? Again, what will happen when these both choppers are off? This is not forward biased, then this one will be forward biased if this is the highest potential point. And D1 is on, completing to plus V, 
because this point is at a higher potential than this point. So this can be the circuit path. So again, quadrant two operation, but none of the chopper is on, means none of the switch is on. So this will fed back a regeneration. Yes. Let us understand this with the help of diagram. This is typically class C chopper. See, this is gate pulse for first chopper. This is gate pulse for second chopper. Means when gate pulse is on, naturally that particular chopper is on. You understood? Then this is I0, how output current flows. See, it goes in positive and negative both the directions. So that is why this is two quadrant chopper. Say D1 on, current is from negative goes towards zero means this path. Is it? Then chopper one is on, current rises. And this is the path of a current. Okay. When D2 is on, this has disconnected, but this energy is stored, so free will action. So inductor, uh, sorry, load current reduces, but in the positive direction. When CH2 is on, that current is further decaying and going to the negative. Why CH2 is on? Because this E forces that CH2 is on uh, to push CH2 and gate pulse is provided. So this is the forward path, but a negative current. So CH2 on, current reaches to maximum negative, the crest value of the current. Then when CH2 is turned off, then this D1 is turned on and see current is rising towards zero, means what? It is feeding the energy back. And at this point, CH1 is on, means V is source is now feeding to the chopper 2 and RLE circuit. Means now this is positive flow of a current. So quadrant 1 operation. And this is how our one cycle gets completed at this point. Is it? This is one. This is another half cycle where we can completely understand the operation about the output current. And output voltage V0 when D1 and CH1 is on, either of these is on, V0 is positive. When CH2 or D1 is on, CH2 or D1 is on, during this period, load voltage is zero because source is disconnected or it is getting energy fed back. So during this period, zero. And then I can draw average out of it to get the output voltage. Means in short, the on period of the chopper, whether CH1 or CH2, will take the current to the highest positive level or highest negative levels. Means this on and off period of CH1 and CH2 will decide whether it will be a, act as a step up chopper, act as a step down chopper. Okay. But it involves even the regeneration of the energy. This is how two quadrant chopper works. And next, the most important and even complex is the multi-phase chopper or class E chopper. It is referred as multi-phase choppers uh, because it operates in all the directions. Means it can act as a forward motoring, reverse motoring, regenerative braking, or even plugging. Let's try and understand the operations. So this is source, a source, this portion is load now. Load is connected in two bridges. This is one bridge and this is one bridge. We can see choppers are in this direction, top to bottom. Diodes are in opposite directions because they act as prevailing elements. Same for chopper 3 and chopper 4 and D3 and D4. In CH1, CH2, CH3, CH4, uh, D1, D2, D3, D4. 
to draw this chopper though it looks complex is bit easy you can draw it as a breed rectifier so and this then this is another likewise this is one and so on so let's try and understand in quadrant one operation ch1 is on ch4 is on means a forward path ch1 i0 r l e ch4 and negative because d4 cannot be turned on d2 cannot be turned on because this potential is higher this potential is higher and this is anywhere you was passed so this is one type of operation in important one another one is ch4 is on but d2 is conducting means this means this ch4 d2 i0 see current is maintaining the same direction but current is decaying because you are not getting supplied by the source now this is quadrant one operation in quadrant two operations what we see is either ch2 and d4 conducts means this and d4 naturally when ch2 and d4 will conduct when this potential is higher this point is at the highest potential and this point at the lowest potential so the circuit gets completed like e l r see the current direction is opposite i0 negative ch2 d4 and e negative so this is quadrant 2 operation quadrant 3 operation is quite interesting it's reverse motoring operation it's called as a reverse motoring operation it means reversing the direction of motor why because voltage is negative current is also negative let's see how it works current has to be negative voltage has to be negative so ch3 and ch2 is on ch2 is on ch3 is on when ch2 is on this has to maximum point so e l r negative i0 ch2 then this point this chopper 4 is reverse bias d4 d4 cannot conduct again it is reverse bias so ch2 is on and ch3 is on so the voltage if i consider the path like this CH3 negative current, CH2 and this, the voltage developed across load will be from this to this. So V across R will also be negative, means direction of current is negative, voltage developed across load V0 is negative because this point is positive and this point is negative. So though source is feeding, the direction of motor or direction of the load current is opposite so the load voltage developed across it is opposite and ch3 ch2 works means here source is supplying but the direction is opposite otherwise in other mode of operation in quadrant 3 ch2 is on this is on and d4 conducts means now these two switches are conducting so e has to be maximum positive point ch2 d4 forward biased because this is the most negative point in the circuit so d4 is forward biased and this goes which goes to negative because this point is positive so this cannot conduct so d4 will conduct and ends up at e negative so this is the quadrant three operation in quadrant four operation either d2 and d3 conduct this is d2 and d3 means completely uh, reverse operation of quadrant 2 what will happen 
uh, see this D2 has to be conducted like this. And D3 has to be conducted like this. And this is the negative point. And this is the positive point. It means voltage is negative, but the current is in the positive direction because current is flowing like this. Negative voltage, but positive current for quadrant four. Or CH4 is on and D2 conducts means this negative most point CH4, D2 and this positive means negative voltage with a positive direction of a current ensures quadrant four operation. This is how this chopper acts in all the quadrants. It has to be designed and operated very carefully. Four quadrant drives or four quadrant chopper uses are very limited and in the sophisticated applications. Along with this, we can see class D or Jones chopper, which works in first and fourth quadrant. This is one of the popular chopper used in the DC drives where voltage can be forward or reverse, but current is always forward. Means this can act as motoring action or a braking action. But regeneration is not possible in this case because source is not supplied by the load in this case. So either CH1 and CH2 can be on a straightforward quadrant one operation. See, mode of uh, interval one, V, CH1, RLE, CH2, and negative of V. Quadrant one operation. Whereas, quadrant four operation, You do have uh, positive I0 and negative V0 means this point has to be most positive and this point has to be most negative. So it can start with E plus L R current in but current has to be in the same direction. If current goes through this uh, direction, it will be negative current means load voltage developed across this will be negative. So this is not a possible operation. So what is the possible operation for quadrant four? For quadrant four, as we had seen in multi fetch chopper, what can conduct CH4 and D2 means this and this means in this case, naturally CH2 and D1 can conduct. Because voltage is negative, it starts with the most negative point. CH2 is on, D1 is on, and current is in the same direction from left to right R, L and E positive. So this is how quadrant four operation will get realized and we can get the Jones chop over. Then to summarize the choppers, we can revise the key points so that after these key points, we can go to uh, SMPS and SC voltage control. The DC component for uh, of a chopper waveform is given by its average value by integrating on period and off period. And all DC to DC converters involves averaging of a load voltage. The ripple is linearly approximated and most of the time it is ignored. Repulse in inductor current and capacitor voltage can be neglected if these are very less in ideal conditions. We try to have our realization close to it. In steady state, average voltage applied to in an inductor must be zero. This is bare minimum required condition for all realizations. As well as current applied to a capacitor must be zero or every, uh, in a steady state for means over one cycle. So increasing voltage means 
बूस्ट कन्वर्टर और स्टेप अप चॉपर डिक्रीजिंग वोल्टेज बग कन्वर्टर और स्टेप डाउन चॉपर एंड इन्वर्टिंग वोल्टेज पोलैरिटी बग बुस्ट and the converters are the major types of choppers used in practice and their major application is in a dc device this is all about the choppers or dc to dc converters where the basic principle was involved as chopping simply cutting it cut into parts that's why pwm is the most important and these circuits this dc to dc converters are referred as choppers i hope we are done with the choppers and next lecture we'll start with the smps so thank you now we'll in the next lecture we'll go towards smps and ac voltage controller within a single lecture we'll cover this and complete our units thank you